G'day guys, I'm just doing a little test today. Uh, just want to show you what it's like if you don't precondition your car before you drive. Um, probably not as critical this time of year, but uh, you know, it's, it's 20, 20 degrees outside and so it's probably not as, as critical. So the battery is stuck kicked off at 22.8 degrees, but I just want to show you that even at that temperature, there can be some regen limitation. Right now it's 46.6 kilowatts max regen power. And that's still not too bad. Um, it's not as strong. It normally sits around sort of 65, roughly around 65 kilowatt limitation. But I'm just going to take you down. I've got a bit of a hill here near my house. Um, it's a bit of a long extended sort of regen braking. And you can see what happens the longer you're regen braking with a, a cooler battery temperature. Uh, you, you'll watch that limitation dial back. So we're just going to head down this spot now. I don't know how we're going to be with sun glare. I'll try and um, see if I can hold my hand over there. So now you can see 46. Look at that kilowatt max regen power coming down. So normally I get to the bottom of this hill and that's really limited. See that limitation, Kate, still, still falling. And it seems to be sort of structured around that, how many kilowatts you're regening. Now I'm down to 20 kilowatts now. Really not much regen there at the moment. Just slight regen breaking. When the battery is actually a little bit cooler, say below 20 degrees, it'll actually get down to just almost no regen braking at all. So if I had have preconditioned this battery and got it up to up to 30 degrees, the battery won't do this. Now I'm not sure if this is just the LFP battery alone. Um, the other thing to think of too with regen limitation is the state of charge. So I'm at 86% at the moment. I didn't want to fully charge it last night just in case, you know, having it up at 100% affects that. But if I was at 100% state of charge now, even with the LFP battery that, that really, even at 100% charge, you still do have some regen braking there. It is reduced, but um, LFP battery normally isn't as susceptible as this, but uh, isn't as susceptible to the limitation at 100% charge, but uh, just thought I'd show you there today that, you know, while they're going down a big hill, it does sort of wind it back. But with it, with a uh, preconditioned battery, battery up at 30, 30 degrees or a little bit higher, uh, you, you just don't, it doesn't regen limit as hard as it just did then that you saw. Now with the battery, I've, I've had it down at 15 degrees and done it on that hill and, you know, within 10 seconds, it's it's basically cut the, the regen back to zero. So if you're experiencing this sort of thing while you're driving first thing in the morning, it's probably because you haven't preconditioned your battery. And uh, it's it's a good thing to do uh, for the for the long life of your battery, and for for a consistent drive feel. So if you're preconditioning your battery, you're just going to have that consistent feel all the time. So while I'm at it, what I might just sort of show you, you can see now I've been driving for a little bit. We have battery inlet is at 24.8. So if I do a couple of short acceleration bursts, you'll see that rear stator temperature come up. It's at 28 degrees right now. And if I floor it, see it jump up to 34. Now it's going to dial it back to, look how far it's dialed it back. 
see how quickly it can control that stator temperature. So the stator is that outside part of the motor and that's where it's running the, flowing the fluid. It doesn't flow coolant through the center part of the motor, it's the outside part. Some road works here. So I just wanted to show you there, if you look now as at the rear stator temperature, it's 26 degrees. And the battery inlet is 25. So you can see that the, the way the coolant's flowing now is it's going from the motor, all the heat from the motor, all the excess heat from the motor gets channeled over through and shared with the battery to, to try and bring that battery up to temperature. So you can see here now, it's, I think it's been about 10 minutes, that battery is still only at 23.5 degrees. Uh, it does take some time to, to get that battery heated up during driving and, and um, unless you hammer it a bit uh, and, and get that motor temperature up, it's just going to take a bit of time to, to heat that battery up. So it really is good to, to let the car precondition and preheat the battery before you drive. I just schedule a departure time each morning for, and I set it for weekdays uh, for, for the time I normally leave for work. And I get out to the car, the cabin's the right temperature and it's, it's preconditioned the battery. And during this time of year where the ambient temperature in my garage is over 20 degrees, uh, the battery is normally sitting on 26, 27 degrees by the time I get to it. And um, yeah, it's, it's at a pretty good temperature and I, I don't really get much of a regen limitation. So you can see there now that the regen limit's slowly coming up and uh, with, with the battery. Uh, if you've got a lower state of charge, uh, your, your battery will tend to warm up a bit quicker because uh, the, the lower voltage, to give you the same amount of power with lower voltage, it needs more current to flow. And if, you, if you're drawing higher currents from a battery, you will, you will heat it up. Uh, if, you're, if you're drawing higher currents or, or pumping higher currents into it while charging, you're going to heat that battery up naturally just with that flow of electrons causing heat. So, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's um, one of those things I thought it was worth doing a video just in case, I think there might be some people out there that, it, that uh, don't see any information on the, the main display of the car, you're not going to see all this happening. And if you're wondering why the regen is limited um, when you first start driving the car, sometimes it can do it depending, you know, it, it, it tends to sometimes in, in the middle of winter here, it's maybe 15 degrees in my garage. And so the battery's starting off, you know, if, if you don't precondition, the battery's going to start off at 15 degrees. And you do get a, a limitation there, uh, being at 15 degrees. Um, the LFP batteries are a bit more sensitive to cold. I'm not too sure if, um, you know, the long range and performance versions of this car have this same limitation with the different, different battery. The LFP is just a bit more susceptible to operating or to, to being damaged when it runs cold. Um, so I think they're a little bit more cautious with it. And this also, sh uh, you know, shows you why the LFP battery, uh, you know, if you don't preheat before you fast charge, why you get some slow charge rates. So the key thing is just make sure you precondition your car and you'll get, get that, that consistent drive feel. So I thought I would just yeah, come along here, you can see Battery inlet's 25.6. So yeah, really this, um, yeah, often I get in the car and the battery inlet's yeah, around 30 degrees after it's done that. The, the, the preconditioning side of things, if you, if you set your departure time, it'll actually cut in and, and use the heat pump as well as the motor. And it gets that battery up to temperature a bit faster. So we can scroll through to temps. Have a look there. Battery inlet 25.9, so it's coming up there. We can see the target temperature for the powertrain and the battery is 30 degrees. So it's trying to get the battery to 30 degrees. I mean, it's already at 
23.8 so it's not madly trying to do it it's, it's just sharing that heat um, around the different cooling and heating systems around from the powertrain and the cabin so I'll show you here another thing if I accelerate all of a sudden you, you see the powertrain flow go up uh, to try and cool that stator down if you do a bit of bit of hard accelerating pretty cool how this thing works if you if you put your foot flat to the floor take off and then back off really quickly you can really hear the the cooling pumps going the the, the coolant flow pumps going really trying to preempt that heat in the motor and, and get that heat back down uh, and, and cool that motor back down it, it really it's quite aggressive and um, pretty cool pretty amazing how that can work it works very well, very efficient. So guys, I've got another hill coming up here and um, I might kill the video after that. I just wanted to, yeah, just wanted to show you that this morning. Uh, something that uh, yeah, people might be wondering about. So I've been pretty amazed with, with how quickly the car can adjust the temperature of the motor and keep that under control especially in pretty hot weather so go back to that custom performance screen see there the regen limit still at 48.4 but as that you know when the battery temperature gets up to 30 so a bit of a hill here now just got a bit of a constant regen going there, 16 kilowatts, 17. It's a bit steeper now. Yeah, watch that regen limit. It's flying back. Yeah, so this the LFP SR Plus, this is the 2021 model, so we got uh, a bit more powerful motor. So you can see, I'm not getting any out, uh, battery output limitation uh, as far as the, the limitation of the kilowatts the battery can, you know, max discharge power. That's all pretty good. Yeah, battery temp really slow to come up. I want to do another video like this uh, on a freeway trip where I'm supercharging and watch how how it can heat the battery up there. Even when it's actively really trying to get that battery temp up, it still can still be a bit slow at doing that. So you know, really, it's it's the yeah, pre-planning, pre-conditioning, and getting all that going before you drive will. Uh, fix some of these issues you're having uh, you, you may still get some issues but it won't be as bad so you would be a bit more of a consistent feel to your drive all right guys might just leave the video there nothing more interesting is going to happen now so yeah just wanted to do that quick video so um, we, we got to see there that the car does try and protect the battery a bit there and uh, you know for those longer periods of regen when the battery's cool and we just had a look at uh, you know how how quickly the the car can keep the the motor temperature under control so that's an area where the heat can ramp up quite quickly and i can't see the uh the temperature of the inverters but they're right there in there with the motor so they would be around very similar temperatures to the motor and uh you know all that 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 heat then gets uh, sent to the battery inlet. You can see the battery inlet there at the moment. Our rear state is 29, battery inlet is 26.9. So now you can see things starting to, to sort of come up in heat. And as that heat is circulated through the battery, it's gonna ramp up a bit, a bit quicker. So usually by the time I get to work half an hour later, that battery's at a good temperature, which is a bit too late. So uh, always good, um, yeah, yeah, precondition your, your battery, whether you 
precondition the car, whether you do it through the app before you leave uh, or whether you're doing a scheduled departure time, both will work and both will, will heat the battery up. So uh, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to do like little videos like this every now and again when I see something cool that the car does and I uh, hope you get some enjoyment out of it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next video. I've charged the car to 100% and you can see here, at even at 100% state of charge with the LFP battery, uh, I've got max regen power of 72.8, but because I've preconditioned the car here after work, um, you can see the cell temp is 31.8 so that allows me to still have good regen power and uh you know even at 100 percent state of charge so that's that's the critical thing